गाड़ी गाड़ी कार Greetings. खिड़की 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 दरवाजा Hello, how are you? Hello? Yes, okay, I can hear you now. How are you? How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm good, thanks. Are you able to hear okay? Should I uh hook up the microphone? Uh, I think I can hear. It's just you're kind of going in and out a little. Hmm. Doesn't sound too good. Let me know if it continues. Okay. Yeah, I think it's more of a connection thing than it is a microphone thing. But. Gadi. Darwaza. 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 Kirki. Kirki. Just check it out here. Come on. A kirki. A window. Darwaza ban nahi hai. What would you like to look at today? Darwaza ban nahi hai. It's closed. Darwaza ban no, nahi hai. Do you have any more Panini and German grammar? Uh, yeah, we can look at that a little bit. I've got plenty of derivations I started playing with the last few days. We could maybe okay. we could take we could do a little list of morphemes in their underlying shapes. That might be fun. Okay. Bund nahi hai. The window is not closed. The door, darwaza, dara. That's a cognate. Char khirkiya. Char khirkiya, khirkiya. Four windows. My thought. Let's look at. We've learned the Agni paradigm, and from that, it's really easy to learn the Bhanu paradigm. Bhanu means. Do you remember? The sun, S U N. Darwaza khula hai. Darwaza khula. It's gonna mean open. Khula. khula. Can you hear me? Hello. And that's open. Khula. The door is open. Khula. Sounds like you went okay. and came back. Now I can hear you. What about now? Okay. Do you know what happened? What was the question? Do you know what happened? Uh, yes, I just blipped off of there because the sound dropped from the next and blipped back on. You say the sound dropped. You mean you weren't able to hear me? Uh, you weren't able to hear me, so I disconnected and reconnected. I see. Okay, so from uh, so we've learned Agni, the paradigm. Let mm -hmm. as we're doing this Hindi, let us reason by analogy how this word Bhanu would go. It means sun. What would be the nominative form? It's masculine also. Bhanu, masculine. Uh... So this stem, as you see, ends in a short u. And it behaves, so to speak, just like the short e final stem, such as Agni, but with a different quality. Kid okay, did you put it in the chat? I did. Just Bahanu. the stem. Okay. Bahanu. So, okay. So, Gunavati. Kirdakyan, plural windows. Are open. No, I'm thinking of the verbs. Yeah. Uh, to, oh, just what did you? What form do you want it in? Let's try to reconstruct the whole paradigm. Yeah, let's try to 
reason through, analogize the whole paradigm. Su so out just to start with. Darvaze or Kirkia. Darvaze, the masculine plural. Or Kirkia, feminine plural. Doors and windows. You know, one thing we could look at uh, in the German grammar would be your excellent suggestion. Things like Gummi. What was the other one that ends in E? Uh, handy. Oh, oh handy, yeah, handy. yeah. For instance, yeah, German. Yeah. German. So Gumi, does uh, it have an umlaut on it? Not in the written form. It's spelled as an English word, even though it's not in oh. that meaning in English. Yeah. Alone spelling. Darvaze kule hain. Darvaze kule hain. Got it. Darvaze. And do you know how to write the Z uh, sound in Hindi? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. I'm asking you too much. I'll let you do one thing at a time. It's J with a dot. You're good. That's right. Exactly right. Daravazi. Daravazi. Kuli. Here's maybe a first one. Okay, let's just do orally. And last, sure, on the plural. Uh, banoho. 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 Yeah, I see it. It is not correct. Bahanu. The dual form is correct, uh -oh. but the others are not. How does Agni go? Agni has Agni in the dual. What's the nominative singular? Kuli. I thought it was Agnihi. Did you say Agnihi? What did you say? Agnihi. That's right. And this one is analogous to it. So Agni, that's a high oh, vowel. We are not. Yeah, but so we do not uh, guna there. Exactly. It goes uh, the same. Darvaze kule hai. Darvaze kule hai. Looks good. Ghar mein ek khirki hai. That's the one. Bahanu. Bahanu. Now, agni goes in the plural, agnayaha. So, ai always equals a, their variants. Here, the gunaval of u, of course, is o. So let's think, what's going to be the pre-vocalic spelling for the o underlying diphthong? Can you say the uh, agni form again? Plural? The just form? Hello? I can't hear you. Uh, can you say the Agni form again? Right, which one? The just form? For the plural? Plural, yes. Yeah. is Agnai Agnayaha, is what it is. Agnayaha. Ghar mein ek kirki hai. Is a window in... Exactly right, very good. Bhanavaha. Bhanavaha, exactly. In the house. Right, let's do su uh, um art shes, please, next. Gharmi ek kitki hai. Kya yah darwaza pila hai? Kya yah darwaza pila, pila hai, pila. Pila. Yellow, oh yeah, like the banana peel is yellow. Pila, pili. So, a yes, no question, this door yellow. Is this door yellow? Aaj school band hai. Aaj. Ah, this is a nice derivation. Aaj means today. It comes from adia. Aaj. School band hai. School's closed today. Hamare ghar mein teen khirkiyan hai. Should be. Hamare ghar mein teen khirkiyan hai. So in our house there are three windows. Teen from the neuter trini. Loss of R. Bahanavam no. Remember how Agni goes? The um form just the um ending just loses its vowel. That's all. Same thing here. Oh. Agnim. Amare Karme. There are three windows. 
hours in our hours. Bahanum, good. Okay, our is really the same as the ow. Bahanu. So we can skip that. Repeat from above. But what is the shas form? Ghar ki khirkiyan band hai. Ghar ki khirkiyan band band hai. Ghar ki khirkiyan. The wind. The house's windows. Windows are. Okay, we want the plural and now. Note that this bund doesn't inflect. It's an invariant form. Mere ghar mein do darwaze hain. Do darwaze. In my house, there are three, two doors. Mere ghar mein, in my house. Khirki par kabutar baitha hai. Khirki par kabutar baithi hai. No, that is the just form, but we want the shus form. Accusative goes differently. Remember, shus oh. comes from an Indo European ms, which became ns ending. That's oh, okay. If that, I think that will help you a little with that. Dewan yeah. with deva, agnin with agni. Kiriki par kab. Do you remember Kabutar? I think that's a dove or pigeon. Kabutar. Kabuta in Sanskrit, I think. Mm. But on the window, Beta. Is that sitting? Beta. Sitting is. But that's it. Good. Bhanun. And if you have a cha following, it'll be Bhanunshcha. The S re asserting itself. All right. Tabhyam pis, if you would please. Uh, pigeon sits on the window. Yeah. Darwaza band nahi hai. Darwaza band nahi hai. Darwaza band nahi hai. The door is not closed. Khirki par kabutar baitha hai. Khirki par kabutar kabutar baitha hai. Baitha. The pigeon is sitting on the window. A pigeon, the pigeon. Fifteenth place, not too bad. I do say so myself. Plenty more to do on home. Bahanuna is not quite. You got the right. You're in the right direction, but a little details missing. Bahanubhyam is not right. Bahanubhihi is correct. Agnina. Oh. The basic. The basic marker is ta. Long vowel. Same here. Bahanuna. And what's wrong with the dual form? Uh, I we? just have a difficulty. Telling the difference between long and short for some reason when I'm typing. I know the difference and can tell it when reading, but for some reason I just like always forget to write the second letter when it's long. I don't know why. So what should it be? Bahanu Biam. Bahanu Biam. Good. Let's do Ni Piam Pias. We can omit the duel because it's repeated. Bed Bistar. What an interesting word. Zameen is from Persian, I think, for... Bistar. Bistar. Those are fixed. No, I'm afraid not. What is the basic instrumental What's singular, Levi? In the... Instrumental? Uh-huh. What's the basic mark, the one that we learned in the recitation? Just, I'm going to trust Da. Da is long. And the stem final is not long. Nor Did I not write long. it long? You wrote Bahanuna. Oh, so the, the way, A at the end, the U is short, the A is what's long, okay. Bahanuna, I put it here. And we can write the M with a with an Anuswara, but basically it's just a plain old M. So we okay. should write it this way. But let's do Ngi, okay. Pyam, Pyas, those three. And so the A from Da comes, and this Nrut. Exactly. Yeah, the end. That's right. So at one stage in the derivation, when we're looking at our pieces, we will have Bahanu, 
nurt, where the oo is not ever sounded and it's not meaningful. And ta. That happens to be two ta's, that's just a coincidence. It's not of any significance. Bahanu, nurt, ta are the three ingredients there. So question, is the nurt added to the stem or is it added to the ending? Uh, I don't Zami. think that that... I don't know. What does the t at the end tell us? Adyantau taketau. We learnt, we've talked about it once, it's been a week or so. There is another uh, it marker, K, that is show, showing, put it at the end. Actually, we saw it in, in, the, in those first few German sutras. Remember we said, okay. but a t tells you this thing goes at the beginning of a thing. So the nut is okay, so, the suffix, not the stem. So it's part of the ta. Okay. Yeah. Let's do ni pyam pyas. Bistar par kitab hai. Bistar par kitab hai. Now you want the data? Please. Ye gaadiyan purani hai. Ye gaadiyan. Ooh, purani hai. Is it full? Purani. Old. Purana is a Sanskrit word. The N would have been a retroflex in Sanskrit. Here it's dentalized. It's reverted back. These cars are old. Zameen par kaun sota hai? Kaun is a question word. Sota. Zameen par kaun sota hai? Sitting also? Sota. Sleeps. Swapiti in Sanskrit. Par kaun? Kaun is who? Kaha. Zameen par kaun sota hai? Who sleeps on the floor? And we've got Bhanavi. Good. Bhanupyam. A little something mixed up there in the last one. Almost right. Oh, two N's instead of two A's. That's right. That's what it should be. Let's go on to... Nasi Pyam Pyas. Let's just do the singular there because the other two are repeated. Zameen par kaun sota hai? Peter or Raj so rahe hai. Just Nasi. Peter or Raj so rahe hai. They do, they be staying sleeping. Raj at the moment of his utterance are sleeping. Oh. That's it. Well, except the A needs to be long. I think you noticed. Baha no ho. Good. That takes care of ablative. Next case is the genitive. And it's naso sam. The really interesting one is the seventh case. She eats a carrot. Ooh. Vaha ik gajar. That's right. I remember now. Vaha ek gajar khati ti hai. She eats a carrot. She is a carrot eater. Neha zameen par so rahi hai. So rahi hai. At the moment of speaking, she is sleeping on the floor. Neha is sleeping. हम क्यों सोते हैं हम क्यों सोते हैं भानो हो आ भान वो हो इज करेक्ट या गुड लुक एट दैट इन अ वाइल भानूनम इज नॉट इट नो फर्स्ट टू आर राइट बट नॉट द प्लूरल आम इज द फॉर्म अग्निनाम हम क्यों सोते हैं? Where क्यों? क्यों? Where do we sleep? Why do we sleep? क्यों? मेरे भाई का घर बहुत पुराना है. मेरे भाई भाई not quite it either. I have agni nam. I don't think that. So it lengthen the right? vowel and add nam. 
Oh, maybe, maybe so. Let's see what this does. Declension. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Bhanunam. Okay. Bhani uh, Agninam. All right. Time for the locative. change anything, I'll go there, or over here. Panuna. Panuna. Three long vowels. By the way, the etymology, Bachnus, Bachnush, from Proto-Indo-Iranian, Bachnush, Indo-European Behnus from Beh to shine, Bhati, and cognate with ancient Greek Pos, which means light. And this is a word I've never seen. Yubar. What is Yubar? Radiance of celestial bodies. Wait a minute. Mere bhai kalagar bahut. Purana he. It, right. This okay. The Yoho is not correct. Panushu, the plural is correct. The locative is Pano. Oh, no. And okay. the locative dual, just like the genitive dual, I've segmented for you. The w belongs to the stem. It's the stem final in its consonant form. Okay. Oh, but, I just typed a Y instead of a V. Mm hmm. Exactly. I see. But the. In the Bahanu, what happens there is that at one point in the derivation, the stem final is chopped off and an U uh is added instead. And then to that a, a, special, a replacement for ni, au, is added instead. Bahana and au give bahana au. Bahana au. And the vocative, the singular is the only one that's different, would be he, bahano, like that. Mere bhai ka ghar bahut purana hai. My. Very old. Mera bhai zameen par so raha hai. Zameen so raha hai. So since the paradigm is done, can you translate this one? Which should be showing up in a moment. Mera bhai zameen par so raha hai. Mera bhai zameen. My brother zameen par at the zameen. Ground. Floor. So Rahahe is whatever so. Sleeping. I don't know so and zami. Is sleeping on the floor. Flo. Yeah, kitab nahi hai. Yeah, kitab nahi. So is to sleep. Okay. Yep. Is that related to our word sleep? No. Don't believe okay. so. And zamin is the floor. Uh huh. It's a Persian word. Old English had a word, sweven, though, that was cognate. Okay. Sleep or dream, I think. Uh, in Sanskrit, the root was swap, and the third singular, present active indicative, swapiti. Yah kitab nai. Nai. Oh, nice. New. Darwaza naya hai. Dervaza naya masculine. The door is new. Darvaze purane hai. Darvaze purane hai. The doors are open. Julia bister par nahi soti. Julia bister par nahi soti. Can you do this one? Bister is the bed. Ah, uh, <clears throat> Julia V. 
स्तर पर नहीं होती जूलिया इज नॉट स्लीपिंग इन द बेड except the tense with that single word verb form is oh, going to just be sleep. doesn't sleep doesn't sleep yeah nayi khidkiyan aur naye darwaze nayi khidkiyan nayi khidkiyan aur naye darwaze na ye na ye darwaze na oh these are both plural na ye ki ada ya aur नए दरवाजे दरवाजे नई खिड़कियां और नए दरवाजे दरवाजे लोग बिस्तर पर सो रहे हैं रिमेम्बर लोग लोग बिस्तर पर लोग सो रहे हैं इट लिटरली मींस द वर्ल्ड बट इट मींस लाइक पीपल पीपल गुड Do you know how to say everybody in French? By the way, it's kind of similar. Yeah. Um, let's see. But, I think French and Chinese have really nice words for everybody. Uh-huh. It's like tout le monde. Tout le monde. Tout le monde. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Mundus, mundum. But it seems because of the two consonants there, you can't. What's going on there? Why is it monde? That's odd. Eaves for the feminine ending usually. Interesting. People are sleeping on the bed. Let's look up this moon. But what's going on with the history of this word? Mundus, munda, munda. So why does it look feminine? Do you know any Latin words that rhyme with mundus? I mean, this one meaning pure or clean has the same outcome. That's tecundus. Very good. Sugum is the French derivative of that the organic one. Is that right? Second, second. Let's see. Occitan, second. What is second? Second. Yeah, there's an old so in the names of kings, I think it's Louis II. But generally, then they've restored the Latin with the voiceless. So that's not a good thing to compare with. हम क्यों सोते हैं? हम क्यों सोते हैं? Why do we sleep? All right. So in my system, what do you think? Let's do a diminutive. What comes to mind, and what would be the, a good basic shape for the diminutive suffix of standard German? And okay, Chen. Good. What can we add? And I think it can stay with a Ch because it it also would palatalize things, right? I mean, you could. That is up to you and like, the analyst. Because like I shorn plus shen makes I shen shen, so it one. will also palatalize. I shen shen. So let me ask you, how would I do the? How would I spell the underlying form of the undiminutivized? Let's see. You do an ash letter for the I. John, wait a minute. When you say this word, the ch is already palatalized, or is it not? There's two ch's. It wouldn't be i horn. The first one. Well, that just doesn't happen to exist, as far as I know. But that's what underlies it. Oh, it should have two h's. Okay. 
and I, okay Eichhorn does exist Eichhorn is palatal Eichhorn okay what palatal does it do do you just do like a C Sedia or something can you do a Sedia can I what do you mean can I do a Sedia uh, I guess you are able to type an ash. Uh huh. I have this character picker open here. I've got a city. It should show up in a second. Yeah. Let me zoom in even further. I've got ash, C city, and H so far. O R N, and then I think the palatalization is part of the suffix. It never shows up without it. Okay. And then what next? Uh, you'll want to stick a J somewhere on the suffix. Not sure exactly where. Okay, let's actually. I treat that J is coming in by a rule, so I wouldn't have it in the very okay. first underlying form here. Okay, and then syllabic N works. Let me get that. Sin. Uh, nope, that's the wrong one. It needs to be where are there? This one that's been picked. Okay, I Hon and Shen, and then so you could in a grammar you could say whenever you have this she, it palatal it spreads palatal palatality to the neighboring segments like leftward. Mm -hmm. Could do that, but let's see. Always there with umlaut except I know of one exception for that. What I would do though for I shan shin, I don't treat xia as a phoneme. I treat it as always derived. Just like the it's kind of like okay. umlaut. It's the umlaut variant of a ch velar one. Okay, so your suffix is chen. Close. I have the suffix like this. And I guess it should be double N because this vowel is never long. I have I, I, Ash, X, H O R N, and then X I N N. X I N N. And the reason for the double consonant is because you have things like Dean and let's see, what else? Strasse and so on. Or if, that's not a good example. If you have just a single consonant after a thing, then it's going to be a long vowel. Whereas if you have a double, short. Okay. So I was. So the X is just the velar one, like velar the IPA. Frequency. Yeah, that's right. And then in the next line, there's a rule that says in a post tonic or a suffix. I'm not sure exactly what the domain is. It won't happen starting from a stressed syllable. Oh, we should mark the stress too, where that is going to go on the root and that's derived by a rule so I'll put that on this line too. I've got an accented eich syllable ash x and then hon and then x j i n n now and then that causes the whole consonant group that j causes the whole consonant group to become slender and I'm going to spell that in kind of an Irish way. I'm going to omit the stress mark because that'll just that's not going to move. It doesn't really move much in German. But the J sort of is going to reduplicate like that. So now I've got the first syllable unchanged, and then H O J R N, and then X J I N N. And it should be showing up in the notepad. Then the next stage says we're going to like merge. Whenever we have a vowel next to a J, it's going to mutate where relevant. Not every single vowel does. An I, a letter I doesn't change. Okay. I see so, it. Putting that in. That's going to replace both of them. The O and the J. Those two get replaced by, uh, by an OE ligature, by an ethyl letter. And the XJ, that's going to mutate as well. 
it's going to be replaced by a sh by the power level. So I've got I. Okay, so what you wind up with uh -huh. is a sequence of an underlying thing and the palatalizing J, and then you just palatalize everything as appropriate. Right. So you suppose in a sense you okay. have palatalized R and N there too, but that there's a, another step that follows called depalatalize that makes that all irrelevant, makes that go away. And then we can have, I guess we can do the reduction of that final syllable here. The in there is just going to be replaced by a syllab again. And we're not done yet because ash is, it needs to be spelled out what that actually is. Which is this aj now place and it won't be replaced by the umlaut symbol. It specifically is designed okay. to come after that. And I guess though, I'm... I, at this stage, when I replace those things, I should have replaced the X with a sh because I itself has that palatal quality, the I did file. So I've revised that now. And I've spelled out the ash into its two segments, and I've got Eichhörnchen. <laughs> and let's break it into syllables too. That's the stressed one at the front. Eich is a syllable. Hun is a syllable. Oh, this is nice. This A ah is followed by two consonants, I. I mean, it's a diphthong, so is it really short? I don't know. That's maybe not too important. But the hun, we know it's going to be the short one because R and N are both there in the same syllable. It's got to be short. And then shin is a reduced okay. syllable. There we are. But what else can we do? See what I've got handy. Oh, for those abstracta, let's do Größe, an abstract noun. What do you want? What okay. should we try to have in the underlying form as the first component? Wait, uh, can you say this word again? Größe means size. Oh, so it's like Gross plus the umlaut and the final E? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And what was the question about it? What do we want it to have as the first component in the underlying form of it? Just gross, probably. Exactly. I agree. And this one, it has a single S after it, and that's going to let the O be a long one. And for the suffix, I'm calling this one ith with a thorn letter, somewhat historically. Oh, if I go to my futhark. This should have a thorn. Oh, that's going to give you like an actual Futhark thorn, not a, like a Roman alphabet thorn. I'm happy with that. Oh, cool. Grosif is my underlying form. Grosif. And then a rule. Okay, I'm going to copy that. This is my starting point. Copy. I'm going to assign stress. It goes on the stem. Stem syllable, stem silver. And instead of if, because that's now an unaccented vowel, I'm going to put a J in front of it, pre iodize it. Gros yith. The th never surfaces as such. We can go ahead and delete it, replace it with zero. Okay. J is now spreading. What do you think? Now you've done something that Panini did not do. What's that? You have included a segment, this thorn, that is not in the language at all. I suppose that's true. Synchronously. So that's interesting. It's kind of just for fun. It doesn't, I haven't thought of it having any effects yet, but it just connects it to the English relative. This if morpheme actually goes back to Indo-European. Hmm. So now I've got Groisjith. Now comes my merge stage. Oi is going to be replaced. To uh. Uh huh. So I'm going to copy that. And, and then finally, the unstressed e at the end goes to just a schwa. Ah, uh, yeah, you could put a schwa. I tend to keep it as an 
as a letter E because it can be said with E. It doesn't need to be a, a reduced vowel. Okay. What do you say? And so after this stage now comes DPAL. And DPAL does a few things. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should just copy this all. And I don't need to keep saying zero, zero. It gets rid of the J and it also moves that E in, an, in a weak syllable down a step. And we're done. And let's break it into, let's add the stress again. And break it into syllables now. Gru is an open syllable. It's got to be long. Gruse. I'm going to use S set as two letters to mean the Shafas S. Now, Gumi, I would just want to have some kind of diacritic or some special spelling for that E to show, even though it's a weak syllable, don't lower it. Not Gume. <laughs> And it, I think it is significant that it's a recently borrowed word within the last century. It basically means rubber. Okay. Razor, we say radio gummy. So I'm open to suggestions. I'm also going to keep the double letter because this oo never lengthens. It's never going to be gummy or anything. But one thing that I thought right away when you pointed this out was we could do i y with the with y okay. in a different sense. That works. Another word that has this, that ends in an E, uh -huh. uh, is just D, right? The right. article. But that's a stressed syllable. Okay, I guess when you say it in isolation. Yeah. But even if you say it like in a noun phrase, doesn't the head noun get the stress? It does get the heads, the main stress in the phrase. But as far as a single word, if we're just deriving that one word, I see. Then, yeah, it's a stressed syllable. So it's just not the right domain for that lowering from depolarization. And then I thought of another word this morning, but it's gone right out of my head. <laughs> Do you remember if it was a noun or a verb? Or, any, or some other part of speech? I think it was a noun. Well, let me know if it recurs. I think I'll wrap up this little Hindi circuit. What language should we do on Duolingo next? Duolingo. Let's... Hmm. You know what? I would like to do Norwegian, I think. But I'm also taking... Okay. If you've got any desires, please let me know. I'll wait till after Norwegian. Wow. Just see if I have... Viva. Sounds good. Yeah, makan purana hai. Yeah, makan. Building? Makan. Yes. Purana hai. Do you remember Purana? Purana. Old Purana. This house is old. Makan. Yeh ghar bhoat mehanga hai. Mahanga. Yeh ghar. Did you have a thought or a realization or something? Did I hear an O? Isn't this word... For old, isn't that like Puravan or something in Sanskrit? Uh, I think the word was Purana. Okay, never mind. There is Purva also for prior. Hmm. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. Let's get Purana. Purana. I think this would be the Sanskrit form. Let's find out. Oh, by the way, Eichhorn means squirrel, even not diminutive. The diminutive is more commonly used, but I think the form is related to acorn, is that right? I think so. It's just like it. Let's see, Eichhorn can for more. Uh -huh. Actually, Old High German, Eichhorno. Eichwerno. Okay, that just got sort of remodeled a bit from Eig move quickly. Oh no, it's not a vegetable name, it's a verb root underlying it. Alright, let's look at Purana in Sanskrit pronunciation. Belonging to ancient or olden times, withered, worn out. And here's, oh that's nice, an underlying structure from Indo-European terms for Purana. Purkhonos. Purana. 
So the long O somehow comes from that laryngeal, maybe metathesis. Yahag har bahut mahanga. Mahanga. Expensive. Oh, okay, so this is related to our words like prior and previous. And the foremost, first, those guys, yeah. For, for, oh, nice. opposed to aft. But this house is very expensive. And I wonder what this second component is in Mahanga. 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 We have a mutation of the vowel for two, which is blue. Mahanga. Like that. Sanskrit Maharga, great price. That makes sense. Chat par kaun hai? That could be a Bhavrihi compound, having a great price. Chat par kaun hai? Chat is umbrella? Chat. Roof. Okay. The shadow, the shader. On the roof, who is? Chat. Chat. उस मकान में चार दीवारें हैं उस मकान में चार दीवारें हैं उस मकान में दैट्स उस दैट हाउस देयर आर व्हाट मीनिंग चार दीवारें हैं उस मकान में इन आवर हाउस दैट्स आउट इट्स नॉट आवर उस इट्स नॉट रिलेटेड टू इसक आवर वुड बी हमारा हमारा in this house, in this house, char four, Iran. There are four walls. That house, okay, it wants it to be that house has four walls, which is kind of odd. We have a postpositional phrase. A little puzzled by that. Yeah, chat bahut sasti hai. ये छत बहुत सस्ती है सस्ती या दिस वन आई डू नॉट सस्ती चीप दिस टेरेस रूफ इज वेरी चीप यह दरवाजा बहुत सस्ता है यह दरवाजा बहुत सस्ता है दिस वॉल इज चीप ये किताबें महंगी हैं ये किताबें महंगी है these books are expensive. यह मकान नया नहीं है यह मकान नया नहीं है ये जो दिस वन यह मकान नया नहीं है दिस दिस हाउस इज नॉट न्यू दैट्स इट यह जमीन सस्ती है यह जमीन यह जमीन सस्ती है सो जमीन फेमिनिन is the floor this floor is cheap hum mehanga khana nahi khate hum mehanga khana nahi khate missing anything here can you do it uh, see. hum mehanga khana nahi khate so we uh Mahanga. Oh, we just looked that up. Uh, expensive. Yep. Great price. That's right. Uh, food. Oh, no. Food. Or possibly it would be expensive food. Not eat. So we don't eat expensive food. I agree completely. And it is. Mere dada chhat par hai. Mere dada chhat par hai. <laughs> Mere dada chhat par hai. Uh, chat is the roof mm -hmm. on the roof. Mere dada, my grandfather. I believe so. On the roof. Is on the roof. Oh, is it here? My grandfather is on the roof. Okay. Yeah. Why is it the plural form though of he? He, it's uh respectful, so it pluralizes. So. That's my feeling. Yeah. Oh, I found an interesting derivation of German. Honorific or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dewar lambi hai. 
Yeah, the word lumpy hand. Maybe a cognate with English. This wall is long. Lumpy. Divari dek rahi hai. Divari dek rahi hai. So some kind of verb. I think it's. I dek. I can't. Divari dek. Looking. Oh, look at that. Can you translate this? It's kind of unexpected. What do you get from it? The verb means seeing, looking, watching. Divare means what? Walls. The walls. The walls are watching. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I think in hai. English they have ears. They have ears or they have the hills. Right. Isn't eyes. that an expression? Yeah. If these so walls like there's are, the walls of ears these walls could talk. Yeah, that's another one. But I think there's also if the walls had ears, that's another yeah. I think. Divar Maybe not. Hurry What is hurry? Hurry. Oh, green. Huh. This wall is green. green. चार दीवारें, दो खिड़कियां और एक दरवाजा। Alright, चार दीवारें, दो खिड़कियां और एक दरवाजा। What is this word दीवारें for walls? What is that related to in English, if at all? Uh, दीवान, I think. दीवारें, दीवारें। Let's find out. दीवारा I think all long vowels here too. Uh, no. Is it just divar? Borrowed from Persian divar. Well, let's go there. Middle Persian diwal. I mean, it could be related to wall with some. Uh, prefix, some first component. Now we've got lots of descendants for this, but beyond Middle Persian, it doesn't tell me where it's from. At, at least not on this page. No, that's as far back as I can take it. Devor. Devor. Oh, it lists the Cyrillic one, though. Uh, it's uh, Tajik. Okay. Four walls. Oh, Do on the page before that, it had like Bulgarian or Russian or something. Bulgarian, Macedonian, Serbo-Croatian, and two writing systems. Oh. Gone quite a ways. This would travel quite a ways. This would two windows. Or ek darvaza. Us makan mein char diware hain. Us makan mein, I'm going to word bank this. That house has four walls. Char diware यह दरवाजा बहुत सस्ता है। यह दरवाजा बहुत सस्ता है। Do you remember this? Say it again. Oh, here it is on screen. दरवाजा। यह दरवाजा बहुत सस्ती है। This uh, wall is very cheap. No, it's these walls. Are. This is दरवाजा। Door. दरवाजा। That's right. These doors. Just singular. Isn't it plural? Oh, nope. Okay. Yep. Singular, it's the singular. nasality that makes the plural. Darvaza. Absent. So it's... On the verb, yeah. Also the form itself. Ah for masculine singular in Hindi. Versus a masculine plural. A, a and e, e feminine or ya for a noun. Do you uh, say that in romance languages, all of the... Uh, Nouns come from the accusative to a uh, Latin. To first approximation. Yeah, there might be some exception. Dios is one. So, which case are we mostly drawing from for our Hindi nouns? Well, it could also be accusative, but it, I think it's been remodeled somewhat to have a long ah uh, for the masculine. But maybe it is an organic. So, well, if what do you think? I don't know to, is the short answer, but okay. I would I would be curious too to know. 
my feeling, as I said, though, is that it's just a remodeled system. There were agent nouns in ta. Let's see, what's an example? From the root drsh to see, you would have the noun drshta, the seer. And that would retroflex. It would look like that. That would be the nominative singular. That's how you can get along. Ah. Uh, or also maha is a simpler example. Right? Mahant is the underlying form. And you add su to mahant. It deletes your t, it deletes your n, and it lengthens the vowel. Maha. That could be the source of this masculine ah. Those would be some candidates for me. So we didn't hear any of the sutras yesterday. Before we get into Norwegian, I'd like to hear a little bit of Ashtachai. And I want some Shiva Sut Maheshwara Sut Maheshwarani Sutrani as well. Ayuna Rudraka Evom Ayavuj Hayavarata Lana Nyamagana Nama Jabhaya Ghadhadhasha Jabhagadhasha Kapha Chata Tha Chata Tavo Kapaya Shashasara Hala Iti Maheshwarani Sutrani Atha Prathamo Dhyayaha Prathamaf Padaha Vridhiradaich Adengunaha Iko guna vridhi Nadhatu lopa ardhadhatu ke Niticha Didhi ve vitam Halo nantara sanyogaha Mukhana sika vachano no nasikaha Tulyas yaprayatnam savarnam Najalau Idu de bivachanam pragrishyam Adasomat She Nipata eka janang Oat Sambuddho shakalya seta vanarshe Unyaha Un Idu tocha saptam yarte Dadha gwadap Adjantava de kasmin Taraptama paughaha Bahu gana vatu dati sankhya Shnanta shate Dati cha Taktavatu nishta Saruvadi ni saruvana mani Vibhasha dik samase bahu vri Pause a little bit on that and dig those spellings with the R. Look where the R goes in Saruvadini. The wa is a, is a syllable unto itself. We won't subdivide it any further once it's written. And the R goes on the right of those two stems. So it seems to come pretty late to our eyes, but it belongs before the V, even though it's to the right of it. And then the second word there, Sarvanamani, that's a little bit more intuitive. Bahu Gana Vatu Dati Sankhya Shnanta Shate Dati Cha Takta Vatu Nishtha And now we know this case form. We see we saw it in Bhanu. And you have an U final stem, the lengthened one. Taktavatu means nominative accusative dual. Saruvadi ni saruvana mani. Vipasha dik samase bahu vriho. Nabahu vriho. And that's this locative singular ending in au. Tratiya samase. Dvandvecha. Vipasha jasi. Prathama charama tayal partha katipaya ne mascha. Purva para para the chinotara para dharani vyavasthayam asam nyayam Somajyati dhana kyayam Antaram bahiri yogo pasam vyana yoho Let's be good switch we'll talk about, but let's do that later. So, into the Norwegian, please unmute if you were thoughtful enough to mute yourself there for the recitation. Our theme here is imperative. Duki matho. Duki, oh wait. <laughs> Need to change languages. Hold that imperative thought until we return to Hindi. What does the Norwegian one? It's got the blue cross on a red background. And let's also... I'll, mm, some of this might be relevant for German derivation too. Looking at one of each. Colors. Merk. Merk. 
We have the word murky, meaning dark. Svart. Svart, with rich reflection. Always happens when R meets another consonant. And, well, it doesn't always, if it's a dental consonant. R plus dental causes rich reflection. V. Vit. Oh, wow. Mm. It's H initial, and the H in English has gone to silent. But it's one of those dialects that preserves the qua, yeah, in English, it's silent now. It's white. I think it's silent in Norwegian, too, at least in the speaker's mm. or this computer's generated speech. Svart. 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 Oh, that's... Svart is like German schwarz, schwarz. but what can it be in English? Swarthy. Uh, Shakespeare had sport, I think, as a word. The Wheat. word is our black come from? Uh, it comes from the same root as blank. Blank. Hmm. Bleich also. Oh, let me get the right one. Let's look it up, though. Black. Where does black come from? Blacka is burnt. Black and in Dutch to burn. <laughs> Look at this old high German word, B L A H, blah. Probably blach. Possibly from pleg, oh, which has Greek and Latin cognates, flagrare and plux, meaning flame. Sanskrit, burga, radiance. Extension of Indo European, bel, shiny. More at bleach. So even though they mean white and black, respectively, related words. From plague from hell. We are in wheat hun. We are in wheat hun. We are in wheat hun. Indefinite. A white dog. So I don't think you see anything showing up at the ends of adjectives in this kind of thing. Which makes German so hard, right? When do you get nothing? When is it an E, E, N, E, R, and so on? For which we wrote those sutras. Colors. Farger. 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 Gul. Gul. Svart. Svart. Nice and short. Farger. Farger. Oh, it has a G instead of a B. Exactly. There's a few words that kind of do that sort of thing. That sort of alternation. Svart. Farger. Rø. 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 Vi spiser svart pasta. Yum, what's this mean? Vi spiser svart pasta. Vi spiser. Oh, uh, we eat uh, black pasta. Oh, is it that octopus ink one? Be. Farger. Farger. Svart. Svart. Gul. Gul. Hvor er den røde genseren min? Oh, even though it's between vowels, the D is still silent. Hvor er den røde genseren min? Genseren makes me think geese. Genseren. Sweater. Oh. Do you remember the Irish word for sweater? I think this is related. Sweater. Hvor er den røde genseren min? Starts with a G also. And look at the word order and the inflection. That red sweater mine. Four words in the noun phrase. Oh, the uh, the possessive one, like mean and all those, is proceed. going at the end, it just can. like it does in ancient Greek. Well, modern Greek, that's more of a koine thing, I think. Maybe you're right. Maybe it doesn't okay. how it goes in classic Greek. But yeah. Uh, in Norwegian, it can go either at the beginning or at the end of the noun phrase. Talerkenen er hvit. And did, did you think of, maybe you said it and I just couldn't hear it, and maybe there's a disconnection. What's the Irish word for sweater? Oh, uh, it's not coming to my mind. Once you say it, I'll be like, duh, obviously. But... Gansy. Duh, obviously. I think it comes from the island name, Guernsey. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure I spelled it. Something like that. This Norwegian word looks a bit like it, too. Talerkenen er hvit. Talerkenen er hvit. Okay, listen to the long syllabic end beginning of the word, pl the plate. Talerkenen er hvit. Talerkenen er hvit. 
Tallerken er hvit. Nei, vi har gule kopper. Nei, vi har gule kopper. Kopper looks like kopfe. Kop, 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 kopper. Kopper. Kops, oh, ok. No, we have yellow or gold. Vi har et mørkeblått gjære rundt huset vårt. Mørkeblått gjære rundt huset vårt. Vi har et mørkeblått gjære rundt huset vårt. Gjære det. Gjære. Gjære. Jens. Ok. Can you piece this together? The whole sentence. Vi har et mørkeblått gjære rundt huset vårt. Around. Good. Our house. Yes, house looks like work or something, but it's our house. The house of ours. And so the T, it's not part of the word. That's the agreement suffix here in both the adjective and the noun for definite and the possessive. So can you get the... We have a marker black fence. The T there is also agreement. Blue is the stem, I think. And murky dark. Dark. Blue is what? Blue. Blue. Fence. Rund, around our house. So, Gjerde, this is, I think, cognate with Russian, Gorat, city, uh, English yard, gotten, and so on, for an enclosure. Here, fence. It's the thing that encloses in Norwegian. Jenta spiser svart pepper. Also, they're in Stuttgart, Stuttgart. Jenta, that's inflected for definite. The girl spises svart pepper. Jenta spiser svart pepper. I think it's she eats black pepper. The girl eats black pepper. Jenta spiser svart pepper. Han liker fargen. Han liker fargen. Any guesses? Han liker fargen. Han liker. He likes colors. The color. It looks plural, but that's a suffixed or an enclitized definite article. The color. That's true of all the Nor the Norse languages. So what I think oh. happened there is you had freer word order in Proto-Germanic. So this thing like fargin reflects farg and then some ending plus then. So I'm going to use a six for an ev here color that, okay. and then it loses its the and fuses into that preceding word. Make sense? Which is kind of what's yes, happening in uh, Romanian too, though with romance words. Det er mørkt. Oh, I guess so. Det yes, er mørkt. That's like our word like. It, it, it likes like. Is that present? Liker is, is that, present. Is uh, that form present in German at all? I know to like something you would use like Mergen or something. There is a cognate and it's gleichen. Yeah, it doesn't have meaning, the meaning of to be fond of. But gleichen is mm. the root. To be equal to, to, yeah, be the same. Det er mørkt. Okay, what's this mean? Det er mørkt. Det er... That is dark. Uh, yeah, I think it's a this. Or it. It is dark. This are dark. Den røde genseren er min. It are dark. Den røde genseren er min. Is our Gansey? Red sweater is mine. Mannen elsker mørk kaffe. Mannen elsker mørk kaffe. Mannen elsker mørk kaffe. Now I need to add the languages we're doing too. What, what do you get for the meaning here? Mannen elsker mørk kaffe. Uh, the man something, the black coffee. Dark, yeah. Well, we say black coffee in English. I we think do. they say dark coffee. Uh, he loves black coffee. Mannen elsker mørk kaffe. Dark coffee, right? Vi liker svart te. Vi liker svart te. Vi liker svart te. We like black tea. Hun har seks gule kyllinger. Okay, how about this? Hun har seks gule. Okay, there's a, a gule. Ending of the noun. Look at that. Not gule. For plural, it's there. Gule kyllinger. Hun har seks gule kyllinger. 
Okay, shu, as in Swedish, an old q has become shu, a fricative. Hun har sex gule kyllinger. Gule. Gule. I should six the other chickens. Hun har sex gule kyllinger. Kyllinger. Rødt er en farge. Now, it's D with an agreement T after it, and there we can hear a stop. It's not rød. Rødt er en farge. It's the, the red is a color. Rødt er en farge. Brevet er gult, og eplene er gule. I looked, I looked up the word for sweater, and it is indeed, as you predict, uh, Norwegian and Irish have a related word, and it is from Guernsey. The place I looked it up once too, and this time it happened to stay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't just come up with that on the spot. I was kind of puzzled oh, by, okay. by these words once before. Yeah. Breve er gult og eplene er gule. Okay, so this is really instructive. It's the same adjective. We see different forms. The letter is yellow, and the apples are yellow. Breve er gult og eplene er gule. Er is it gule or gule? Brevet er gult og eplene er gule. Look at that. So the voiced one stays a stop. Gul. But with shuli, oh, it's a different vowel phoneme to u versus y. So let me slow down there. This one also sounds front, but that shift may have happened later and hasn't caused palatalization. Svart. Svart. How nice. So the agreement uh, suffix t for neuter is one of the things that led me to set up a ts in the articles for neuter singular, right? The ein, mm -hmm. einats I wrote for ein, einats, eins, I wrote, and dats for das. You could also okay. do that, you know, if we had the problem of nase with a z and strasse with a s. You could say strasse reflects an affricate ts that is then replaced by a fricative s later on in the derivation. And the ts can be a s or a ts, but never z. So, underlying ts will surface as s sometimes, ts others, but never z is what I'm saying. That would be one possibility to take care of Straße Nase. <laughs> okay, any requests for languages on your end? Uh, Polish. Excellent, we shall do it. Polish up or Polish? And the reason I say that is because we just saw the word eplene, which mm -hmm. made me think of the word yabko. Very good. An excellent reason. Maybe I won't go straight. Those don't off. sound very much alike. Well, that happens a lot with cognates. Things, yeah, you have to, it takes a lot of careful work to establish true cognates. They can all be quite divergent. Uh, chakra, do you know this word? Mm -hmm. Do you know the English cognate? They don't have a single sound in common. Oh. oh, wow. Okay, I know we've loaned it into English as that we chakra. Have. That's not what I'm talking right, about. But... That's a derivative or right. borrowing from Indic, but what is the true cognate? Back through the eons yeah, and then back part. down to us through the eons. Did you say it? No. It is no, wheel. I don't know what it is. It is but wheel. Once you say it, it will seem obvious. Wheel. Okay, so which segment is. That's a great same. question. Yeah, what do you think? We don't keep it. You said one segment we have preserved, but I don't think we've preserved any. R maybe turned into the L at the end, but vice versa. It was a uh, it was a basic L, and Indic often turns things into R's, Indo-Iranian, I should say. Okay, and the C, or maybe one of the consonants prior to that, I think is preserved as the H in the spelling. Say that again. Correct. Say I... it again, please. Either the C or the K. I'm not sure which one. Probably the K. No. Because it's a shatem. So one of those consonants is preserved in the H and the spelling. Hmm. 
one of those consonants preserved in the H. Mm, I wouldn't put it quite that way. Here's a third cognate, though, to round out the picture. This is Greek, kouklos. Mm. It's a different vowel grade in the first syllable across these languages. Okay, and we take that one in, too, a uh, cycle. Exactly. Cycle and chakra, they're, they're kind of close, especially if you sell cycle, spell cycle with a C. It unites them somewhat spuriously. Okay. But what would you say would be true about the protoform we already identified l was there in the end or toward the, in the second syllable there's some l there yeah i think it would most closely resemble the greek in terms of consonant Good. because we know sanskrit is a chatem language that so would have like palatalized some of the k's that compare with latin kentum so i think that might have occurred I don't know about the vowels, though. On this, Greek is usually quite conservative. Here's a reconstruction. Yeah, I do. It's a reduplicated noun. It's based on a single verb. It's not a compound. It's based on a monosyllabic verb root, and derivation was one of the morphological processes that was applied. And let me just piece it together here. What would you say was the root, seeing this? Quekulos. Quekulos. So you see how that could give chakra. The first syllable, que, becomes ke, becomes che, becomes cha. Whereas the k doesn't palatalize because there's no e next, or there's no e to the right of it. There's the e before, but that doesn't carry its effect over in that direction. What would the root form be, do you think? What would be a good option? But we have the proto form already shown. What are you asking for? But this is this proto form, a noun, of course, because the wheel is a thing that you can touch. It's based on a single syllable verb root. What might the form of the verb root be? Oh, uh, quack. But no, because all the verb roots are open syllables, aren't they? And yeah, e. no, 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 they wouldn't. No, no, there's plenty. No, because hell is to shine. Okay. In fact, I if anything, know. right? What the what Saussure's laryngeal theory posited was that the ones that look like they're open that have long vowels were actually closed syllables, and the consonant got lost. So really, the okay, bias is toward closed oh. syllable roots. Okay, quick. Good guess, but I think. This is and one matter. of them could have been not a qua and then assimilated to a qua. But as well, maybe I maybe I said it too quickly. But this noun is built through reduplication. Okay, quello is the root. That makes sense. So in some stage in the derivation, it would be like this: quel quellos. In the first root, right, the one to the left there, you'd lose the coda. You'd keep the coda in the second iteration, but lose that vowel. That vowel syncopates out. So just those two changes are all you need to derive quequlos. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. The medial qua is just lost in English, but you preserve qua as a hua, w-h, quite regularly. So I'm pretty sure I said that a few minutes ago, and you Rejected, I guess, my way of phrasing it. Yeah, the phrasing quite. You said something about one of the either the ch or the ka being there in the h of the wh or something, but I didn't. Yeah, the voicelessness of the of one of the quell. So you take like the stem quell, right? The qua is qua voiceless w, and then the voicelessness goes away, giving English wheel. And the, the H is still there to indicate the voicelessness. I suppose so. Okay. Dziękuję, cześć. 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 Bye. Okay, I think this is a second plural form, maybe. Cześć. Or it could be second singular. It could be a sip ending. Please. Hmm. Brosher. That's a, a mip form. Brosh. 
function with that nasal letter E. Is it SZ? Yeah, it is. It's not Hungarian, but Polish. Proszę. Isn't it nice that we know MIP now? The only way that the only part that's reflected is the M, but not as a consonant, but as a feature on the vowel there. Dzięki, pa. Thanks. Bye. Pa. Bye. Okay. Dzięki. Dzięki. From German, or Germanic at least. Mm. Looks kind of German because it's a duh underlyingly, rather than a th. It's voice, not voiceless. Thanks, and then cześć. Cześć. So do you know what CZ, what consonant that represents? The CZ digraph? In phonetic terms, what it is? Uh, like an ash? No, CZ is a tr, an uh, affricate that is retroflex. Tr. Oh, tr. The acute marks on the ch and the ch, they tell us that it's palatal. The palatality is generally indicated by a following letter I, but here they use the diacritic because it's just a one syllable word. Tak i nie. Tak. Tak. I. I. Nie. It's like thanks and no. Yes and no. Tak. Oh yeah, it's not Swedish. <laughs> tak. Tak for yes. Cześć. Cześć. Oh, that's so funny. Tak means yes in Polish. Mm -hmm. oh. Doesn't it mean no in Indonesian? I don't know. Let's find out. Indonesian adverb no or not. Good. And that's even no, funnier if you think of the... Indonesian and the Polish flags are just Proszę. upside down of each other. Ah, cool. Wow. Proszę. Proszę. Good flag knowledge. Papa. Pa, bye bye. Nie, dzięki. Nie, dzięki. Proszę, nie. Proszę. Proszę is like please. No. Dziękuję, pa. Bye. Tak, jem chleb. Tak, yes, not J, yes, jem chleb. I eat chleb, bread. Do you know the Sanskrit equivalent of jem? Uh, let's see. I would spell, I would say uh, the root words. is odd, huh? and the suffix is meep. I don't know how to stick them together correctly. You, don't, you just lose the P. The it goes. Admi. So what was the protoform Admi. there? Uh, I think these can be equated. Assuming it's the same verb inflection. Let's let's assume for simplicity it is. What would you reckon? Admi? Yeah. The susurs. Okay. Yeah. Put the H for oh, and that's H1? H1. That's right. Doesn't color the vowel here, and it doesn't lengthen it because it's before the vowel. But structurally, okay. it makes sense to have it there. Dzięki pa. Dzięki pa. Thanks. Bye. All right. Now let's push forward. Adjectives is our theme. Our topic. Duża i smaczna kawa. Smaczna, tasty. I think. Duża. Hmm. Large, I suppose. Duża. And the uh, Z with a dot over it also retroflex, but just a fricative. Large and tasty. Kava, also voiced, like we saw in Yiddish yesterday. Mm. Let's see where this ultimately comes from. Besides the word coffee itself, I think most of the coffee-related words are from Italian. Well, it's true. Café. Here's a good Arabic source. It's got 
Q, H, W, and then final A, ah, feminine. So, hua sequence, that could be, so that when, they, when you have it as an F, that's those segments telescoped onto each other, kind of. Ottoman Turkish, kahve. To jest małe. In the, in the Bach Cafe Cantata, they, they mention, and he called, and whoever wrote it, whoever wrote the libretto, refers to coffee as der Türkentrank. Mm. To jest małe. To jest małe. Małe. Small. Okay, it's got M-A-L, just like our word small. Mawe. And this, I think, is neuter. To is just like to. thud in Sanskrit. And what would be the Sanskrit equivalent for this yest, a copula? Uh, let's see. It It's not from the bohu verb of being. The other one. It must be from the other one. Yes. Which is what? Us? Mm -hmm. Good. So it should be... Asti. Asti. Uh, the, okay, yeah, the, the P in tip tells us this syllable, or this morpheme that the P is on, is never accented. Asti. Asti. Yeah, the non-singular endings, none of those have a P. Those can bear the accent, but the singular ones, tip, sip, mip, they never do. Asti, and that, of course, means that it was hesti, or esti, or whatever the H1 is. To jest duże. To jest duże. This is duże, big. Any duże. guesses about where this duże, duże. comes from? Or related words? I got nothing. Uh, let me see when it comes on my screen. What is the meaning? Big. Duże. Duże. Big from Slavic. Duży. Daugias. Okay, it's just a Balto Slavic word, apparently. Nothing beyond that. Ooh, but let's look at this Slavic paradigm. Wow, it's an adjective, so we got all three genders. Let's look at the masculine, though. All the Sanskrit ones we've studied so far have been masculine. Su, au. Just, okay, su, no, su, au, just, but su, um, that's accusative. No, no traces of su or um. But then instrumental. Ah, uh, looks like they've taken a plural form here. It's nothing like ta, dative, mm, ish, duju, from ni, ablative, did they didn't have it, genitive, ngas, ngasosam, ngas here, duja, locative ni, duji, there's a good match. <laughs> Yoo hoo and evocative form, duju. So... Hmm. Not too terribly similar. We do have au au, uh, piam. We don't have b, but we have a m ending for dative instrumental. And then genitive duju is os, locative also. Genitive and locative dual match, just like in Sanskrit. And evocative. Now, duji. This may be an I stem actually. Would be a better so agni would be a better paradigm to, to compare with. But anyway, compared to the basic endings, us, shus, giving j and j. Instrumental duji like bis. Hmm. Dative. Now duji. this is adjective ending. Uh huh. Well, the I don't think there's a special set of endings just for adjectives. I could be wrong. But adjectives just okay. What an adjective is in Indo-European is a verb in nouns clothing. Małe śniadanie i duży obiad. Sorry? Say again? Did you? I can't hear you. It, the adjective just behaves the same as the noun. Basically, yeah. There might be one or two peculiarities of inflection, but it's noun endings. It's interesting how when you study different languages, you get the sort of the spectrum of how nouny, like the spectrum from noun to verb, 
of adjectives. Like in Indo-European, they're more nouny, and in like Korean, they're more verby. Indeed. Małe, small. Śniadanie. Małe śniadanie i duży obiad. Śniadanie i duży obiad. Śniadanie means small, a small. What do you think śniadanie breakfast? Śniadanie. And a big obiad dinner. Lunch, dinner? Obiad. Lunch or both. Obiad. Lunch or dinner, afternoon meal. Śniadanie. Obiad. Well, this looks like the root ed in there. Obiad. I think Now it does have the eating root in it. Obyesti from yesti to eat. And what's the ob? Could be a uh, positional ob. But there's no link there. Duży pies. Duży. Duży pies. Duży for big dog. Wow. Pies. Ten kot jest mały. Ten kot, that's a dyktyk, I think. This cat, jest mały, is small. Ten kot, jest mały. Mała kolacja. Mała kolacja. Oh, this is a Latin word, collation. Small dinner. I think it is. So it looks like it, kolacja. What is the meaning? Colazio. Dinner. Colazio. Dinner. Wow, it's colazione is breakfast in Italian. Mm -hmm. it means a selecting, a laying together. Confero. So root suppletion in this verb. Ferro to carry, to bear. Ye perfect. We had a lot step. The participle, rather. Uh, the perfect was tuli, also related. Ferro tuli latus are the principal parts. Duża kaczka i mała ryba. Duża kaczka? Like a kitten? No, this one's duck. Kaczka i mała ryba. Kaczka. So it's a large duck. And a small... Ryba was the fish, right? Uh, Indeed. Maybe. Pająk jest mały. Pająk jest mały. Pająk is small. A spider? Pająk. That's an interesting word. Pająk. Pająk. Pa and then onku. Henko's hook is the root for that part. What is pa? Missing. Later secondary. Yes, the The spider is small. Duża kanapka. Duża kanapka. Duża, a big sandwich. Kanapka. To zwierzę jest małe. To zwierzę. This... Zwierzę. Ah, I think I know it. Which word do you think zwierzę is? Zwierzę. Jest małe. This something is small. Option It's a noun, uh -huh. first of all. Mouse, egg, and oh. animal are the suitable choices. Well, it could be maybe German Tia uh, would be one guess. Conceivably. Zwierzę. But it also to it could be mouse zwierzę. because the zh on the end looks like kind of diminutive -y. So maybe it could be a mouse. I think it's really also that makes sense if it's small. So the word, the verb root is the one live, which we have in bios in Greek and also jeev in Sanskrit. Zwierzę. 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 Beast. From zwe, zwe, iris. From quer. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Ferocious and Greek. Tea. 
pair th eta so theta eta rho was the cognate. It's not what I thought it was. Bero possibly. Hmm. Ferox ferocious is here. Sharu sherwe in Tocharian. Quer queer. This animal. So it looks a bit like Tia. It does indeed. It has that meaning, but not connected. This animal is. Agua gave a in German. To jest duże zwierzę. To jest duże zwierzę. Something animal, big animal. This is a big animal. Mały chłopiec. Mały chłopiec. What's this one mean? Uh, oh, chłopiec. Huh? Oh, we know this one. It's a small boy. Wait, let's see it on screen. Oh, okay. Small boy. Small boy. Yeah. Small chłopiec. Chłopiec is a fun word to say, just like something about the structure is appealing. Hmm. I wonder... Don't you think? Well, I don't dislike it, certainly. Sure, I like it. I wonder, I think the... Do you feel that the first syllable in chłopiec is open or closed? Is it a pia onset or is it chłopiec? I am eating. Uh, I guess we'll have to hear it again. Well, we can also okay. look it up. On I have no PM. native speaker intuition. Uh, well, consider how the E there will often palatalize a preceding consonant. I think that's more likely to happen if the Y is a medial glide. So I think it's Huo and then Pietz. Probably. Mal, and that's what maximal onset principle would also predict. So, yeah, I'm going to assert, I think the first one is open. Okay. Quo, yeah. Let's look it up. Now, what's the gender of breakfast? Snyadanya. Snyadanya. Małe. Śniadanie. I'm going to guess this. But it's, oh, wrong adjective. Duże. It is the right gender, though. Duje śniadanie. Have to have the same last sound. The lion is big. Ui. Lef. Lef. Yeah. Jest. Duje. Duży. Duży. I am eating a big breakfast. Jem. Jem. Duje. Duże. Duże. Śniadanie. Śniadanie. Here too. Here we have it twice. The e palatalizing an onset. Śniadanie. Śniadanie. All right, let's look up chłopiec here real quick. Uh, so I need a Polish keyboard. Chłopiec. So you can just type L equals sign to get the Bard L. Mm. And here in it agrees with us. Put that it puts the boundary after the all. Chłopiec. Okay. Chłopiec. Serbo Croatian has chlapac. Chłop. From Holpu. Now, this is interesting for Proto-Slavic. That means the LP must have been a complex onset, I suppose. Mm. Let's do one more of Polish and then maybe Esperanto and call it an evening. Czy ta kolacja okay. jest dobra? What did you say? I said, okay. Okay, sounds like a winner. So, czy, here's that one that I think this czy was borrowed into Esperanto, right? For a yes, no? Colazia is dobra. Oh, it could be. It could be the Polish version. Of Isn't that. it also the source of the word or in Yiddish? Might be. Or, the, yeah. Let's see. Is this ta colazia? Right. Pointing. Is, is it the case? We could say for chi. 
this breakfast is good. This dinner, rather. <laughs> now I'm thinking in Italian. But good eye spotting that one with it and remembering what it means in Italian. Ten mężczyzna jest dobry. Interesting. Then this looks like getting back to what question what language are you asking about? Oh Hindi, whether what case form the nouns descend from. This ten for masculine looks like it's from um dum for the dictic. Okay. Like it's generalized the accusative. But I've been wrong before. Mężczyzna, this man, yes dobry. Is this neuter? Dobry. Mężczyzna. This man is good. so dobry for good. That's like dobro pożalovat in yep, Russian, I think. Sure is. Dobro is all over Slavic. Jedzenie jest dobre. Jedzenie, jedzenie jest dobre. The food. Oh yeah, the, the eating root there. Jedz. Dziewczynka jest zła. Zwa, what a cool word. I find that very appealing. Zwa. The girl is bad. The word bad, so bad it has to it's banished to the end of the dictionary. Tamten koń jest zły. Tamten looks reduplicated. Very very instructive. Tamten is because we see a chain. Tamten. If it's really tam tam underlyingly, look what happened to the second um. Konie. This looks what is konya? How did that? Where did that come from? This horse word. Zły. Zły is a cool word. Oh. Tamten koń jest zły. Zły. Zła. So much cool stuff. Koń. Find out. Koń. I can't copy it. Tamten koń. Tamten koń. Koń. It's interesting that it has. It ends in a palatal n. That's not common in codas in most languages, I think. What are some languages you know that have that allow enya in a coda? Uh, I wait. Wow. Uh, what about Portuguese? No, that's not in a coda though. Right. Well, Minha. maybe. Maybe it is somewhere. Piranha, minha. It's certainly there. Look at the etymology for horse from a word meaning hornless. How does a single syllable word mean hornless? <laughs> Kobula. Kabalus. Oh, working horse. Kabalus. Proto Celtic. Huh. There are a few theories. Okay. Or Kim. Hornless. Oh, it's just a single word. Uh oh, they've got the. Look at this. See in there. Okay, you probably can't see it at the moment. But in this etymology section, do you see where it says Vasmer and then author question? Has that appeared for you? Uh, let's see. All the major domesticated animals for horned cattle. Is that the thing I'm supposed to be seeing? Uh, yeah, look at the Vosmer Sanskrit word. Do you see the mistake? Komna, author question mark. Okay, in the author question mark. Do you see the mistake in the Sanskrit forms? We've got Devanagari and also Romanization. Uh, I'm guessing they put... Well, it looks like there's an accent mark on the A, right? That's not a mistake. That can. That's fine. But there is a mistake. Okay. Is it the wrong the S? Exactly the wrong. Looking at the other cognates, Kim, Kemas in Greek. Which of the fricatives should mm -hmm. it be likely? Oh, English hind also is. Ch. Yeah, sh. It should be palatal. So let's go. Okay. You want to fix it? You could probably fix it. It is editable. Because it's in the wiki family. I was just about to propose, yeah. Do I get it with a Z? No, that's a Z. Or do I get a Sh? Rare, probably rarely used in Hindi except in Sanskrit words. Because the Sh regularly became a S, as in da, Is it Das or Das for 10? Uh, das. Well, oh, the length, I don't know. Okay, yeah. I don't recall either. Alright, I have fixed it and I'm going to publish. Mm. Uh, here I'm at. There we go. Got it. What should I call this? How should I summarize this edit? Uh, Say down correspondent. Uh, 
corrected or something. I don't know. Got an entry now. Okay. We made the world a better place. Konie jest zły. To jedzenie jest złe. To jedzenie jest złe. So, zła, zły, and złe are the three genders. And these might be accusatives because... Jedzenie. Yes. The food, this food, to, this food is złe. Evil, I don't think so bad. Złe zwierzę je mięso. Złe zwierzę. Złe zwierzę je. Mięso. Mięso. Do you know all these words? Złe zwierzę je mięso. Zwierzę. Yeah, zwierzę is the animal. Good. Uh, related yeah. to our word ferocious from the Latin. That's the one. Uh, zwe is bad, and Good. it's very nice. Phonetic <laughs> word, zwe. And the ZL looks cool, and then bonus yeah. that the L is crossed out, given a W sound. That is, doesn't it? And how about mi yeah. mieso, the pretty Mieso. Word. That's what I don't know. All right, it means eats meat. Okay. For the meat word we have in Sanskrit, masa. Masa, masa, I think it's long. And the Latin word, mem membrum. The member comes from this for flesh. Dobra kawa. Dobra kawa. What's dobra kawa mean? Good. Coffee. Very good. Ten chleb jest dobry. Ten chleb jest dobry. Ta kobieta jest dobra. Ta kobieta jest dobra. Can you do this one? Ta kobieta jest dobra. Ten lew jest zły. Ten lew. Ah, devoicing on the v. Ten lef jest zły. Are you there? Yeah. Okay. This line is bad. Tamto jabłko jest dobre. Tamto. All right, maybe not just for duplication. Tamto jabłko. Oh, I just heard the word jabłko. There it is. Jest dobre. Tamto jabłko jest dobre. Now you would know it before you eat it. Ah, bad, good. All right. Ona jest zła. Ona jest zła. Sounds kind of like szła also. Mężczyzna jest zły. Zły. Mężczyzna jest zły. Wino jest dobre. Wino. Irish Fian. Wino jest dobre. Tamto jabłko jest dobre. Get this one right. Tamto jabłko jest dobre. Okay. Uh, before I forget, let's look at one sutra in the Ashtachai, the next one. Antarambha yogo pasamvyana yoho. 1136. Antaram Bahir. All right, we have some fusions. That's Antaram. The word Antara. This is a neuter form, nominative singular neuter. Antaram Bahir Yoga Upa Sam Vyana. And then Yoho, the ending. Upa Sam Vyana. Antara is always a pronoun, sarvanama, when it means outer or underwear, but before just optionally so. Bahir is the word outside. Bahir yoga. Is that a thing? Upasamvyana. I don't remember what the word breaks are here. Does this tell me Antare Mayor Bahir Yoga? No. 
Gramayor Antare Vasati Gramayor Village Antare between the villages he wears. Antare is not a pronoun because it means between, not outside. Wait, Vasati means where? Mm -hmm. Cognate. With roticism in English, where? Uh, oh, like and interestingly, same consonants as vest. Exactly. Well, it's not an accident. That I was about to say the oh. we have the word vest from the same root. Ennomi in Greek, where the w has dropped and the s is assimilated to the n. Antaram bahiryo All right. Look at the ending. What? Does this yo ho reflect which case marker? It's one of the soup. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Upasamyana. Upasamyana would be the one. Yo ho. Uh. Yo ho. Genitive or locative? Mm -hmm. What number? Agnyo ho. Ichi ni san yong go roku. Uh, six or seven? No, not, I don't mean number of the case, but grammatical number. Singular, dual, plural. Oh, uh, dual. That's right. Dual. I think it's locative with a sense in the meaning of these two. So it's a dvandva compound. And I think the components are bahir yoga and upasamvyana. If that's true, upasamvya would have four uh, upasarga prefixes. Pretty impressive. Vyana yoga. And the, remember how deva goes in genitive locative dual. It's not devauhu or devohu, but that too we replace the final a uh of the stem with a. De ai oho. Genitive locative dual. So the ya, it looks like agnioho, it may have spread there from there, but it's an a uh stem in this case. Okay, now let's turn to Esperanto. Where are we? There it is, green flag. Ne estas butero sur mi japano. Ne estas butero. So the existential sense of esti. Oh, how nice that it would, that, that would be the infinitive, to be. Pure Indo-European, esti. Ne estas butero sur mia pano. Any guesses? Ne estas butero. Butero. Oh, I don't know this butero. Think double the T, drop the O, and you've got the English. That's oh, my guess. butter. This is my. On my pano. I know. You'll see my guess. Bread. Oh, okay. It just needs an O because it's a noun. Just pretend you're a conehead, oh, pretending to be both Germanic like. and Romance in your in your lexicon. Yeah. Esta stroda butero surgi. Esta stroda, very da. Italian with that fusion, butero. Surgi. Esta stroda butero surgi. What does this one mean? Esta stroda butero surgi. Stroda butero. Something of the butter on. Uh, Do you know this? Throw is probably troppo in Italian, right? Troppo? Like, yeah. Maybe. In, in French, it's like this it's to with a silent P. Oh. Too much. There's too much butter. On that, on it. Adamo trinkas iom de la suco. Iom. Hmm. I don't recall. Do you remember iom? Uh. Let's see it written. Iom. 
Oh, let me check my tabello de correlativo. Okay, please do, and I'll tell you my guess that it is that it means sum. I think it means Adamo drinks. Yes, some. that is correct. All right, get that in my brain. It means tium amas. Cavanto. Okay, good. Mitium amas vin. Mitium amas vin. Amas. Love you so vin. much. Tium that much. Chu vi havas iom da fromaggio? Chu vi havas iom da. So I think da for a partitive. Da fromaggio. Let's say it means any mm. cheese or some cheese. Do you have some cheese? Do you have any cheese? Interesting. They're going with the French and Italian formed cheese, but specifically butero. rather than just a, yeah, indeed. a fromaggio. So our Germanic word cheese is from Latin, and our Germanic word butter is from Greek. It, the root is boo, the cow. Oh wow! Kiom da pomo vi havas? Kiom. Okay, the question word, da pomoi, and this is an unmarked object of preposition. Vi so, ni. Kiom da pomoi vi havas? Vi havas. How much of, or how many of the apples do you have? Do you have? You plural. Adamo manjas iom da fromaggio. Adamo manjas iom. And da fromaggio, some cheese, indefinite amount. Estas tro da sucero en mi ateo. Estas tro da sucero en mi ateo. What was it? Estas tro da sucero en mi ateo. Teo. Kiom da aquo estas en la glaso? Kiom da aquo estas en la glaso? Ni tiom shatas fragoin. Ni tiom aquo shatas. For sure, shatas fragoin. Fragoin. Ni tiom we that much like questions. Strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> Frago. <laughs> Strawberries, questions, whatever. As the case may be. Kiom da infanoi ludas en la parco? Kiom, kiom da infanoi ludas en la parco? Oh, you know what I said? that it's all present tense in Duolingo, but we've seen other tenses here in Esperanto, just because we're further along. No, we... Okay, yeah, we've encountered some past tense ones. I think you said in Hebrew you've seen it in your own study. Yes, that's true. Vi manjas tiom da viando. Vi manjas tiom da... Now, this is from French, viande. Viando. Yes, so it means meat. Where does this viande come from, though? It's an odd looking word. V I A N D E. It's got it. Viande. From V. Oh, how cool. From Vivan. Alteration of Vivenda. Neuter plural form of Vivendus living. <laughs> I, that's precisely when I would not like to eat meat, is when it's still alive. <laughs> Personally, to each their own. The butter is on the plate. La tero estas en la. Is it plato plate? Mm -hmm. Or platonic? Oh, there was this one French dude uh, who Nivero. ate an airplane. He made an airplane? That? Oh, it's he a, ate one. Ate one. He turned his avion into viande. Sur. Yeah. Okay. Sur la telero. It does sound very vaguely familiar. Do you know how long ago this was? The plane eater? Uh, yes. He actually apparently died in 2007. From his 
Planophagy? Uh, he, his name was Michel Lotito, but he, they called him Monsieur Mange Too. Mange what? That's a sentence I've never uttered before. Mange what? <laughs> Mange Too. Too, oh. Yeah. A pickpocket compound. Eat it all. Eat everything. Yeah. Oh, nice. Monsieur Mange Too. But do you know when it That's was? That's not 150. That's the plane he ate. Sorry? Cessna. Oh, okay. Cessna do you know, aircraft. But do you know yeah. when it was? Quando? Oh, when he ate it? Yeah. Uh, it took him roughly two years to be eaten from 1978 to 1980. I see. I was born just a bit too late to catch any of it. Pardonu mian infanon, kiu tro manjas. Pardonu mian, mian infanon. Pardonu mian infanon, kiu I, tro manjas. Uh, I don't know who Ian is, but welcome back, Kalguru. We're actually about to call it a night. Yeah, it's been lots of fun today. Touched on several languages. How are you? Yes. Still trying to catch this. Yeah, it's about over for today. Say that on the stream. I guess if you look at the other ones, it'll tell you what number. Oh, and I've also got it up here. Yes, thank you for noticing. Pardonu mian infanon, kiu tro manjas. Kiu. What's kiu. kiu tro manjas? Manjas. Is that a relative pronoun? Kiu. Who ate too much? Who eats too much? Or because, maybe. Because he eats too much. Super moon. I don't know what that is. is he... Sounds like a setup for a joke. Qu'est-ce que c'est super moon? I know there is a lunar eclipse uh, oh, tomorrow morning. I see. Last later tonight. Oh. Perhaps that's the phenomenon. Indeed, that would be a good candidate. question. I have not ventured outward since the sunset. Let me do that though once we go off stream. Do you have super moon, Calguru? Kiutro manjas. Because he eats too much? Who is eating too much? So do you have this in your chart that Kiu is a relative pronoun? Uh, Kiu in my chart is Demanda and Persono. Persono. Oh, it's Domanda with, an, with a final... Demanda. Demanda, meaning what? Question. Why is it end in an ah? That should be a noun, right? Uh, all of the columns oh, end it's... with... A, so that makes them adjectives, I guess. So it's probably demanda persona, so right? Uh, Questiony person, person or something. Because it's, yeah. I see. Good. good. And it translates it as who or which one. Uh -huh. you. So modeled on the English type of relative rather than the German one, which uses der, die, das, right? Mm -hmm. The butter. La butero estas sur. La, is it telero? Do you remember? It's like plate, single L, double L, telero. Does, uh, does Esperanto have double consonants ever? I don't think I've seen I that. don't think so, yeah. It's too simplifying, like Spanish does. Okay, so let me go check on the moon. And I'll tell you next time. Okay. You join us about the moon. Thanks for... Uh, I don't think it's supposed to eclipse until like 4.45 or so. <laughs> with full eclipse at... Uh, total eclipse begins at 6.11. A.M. Uh, greatest eclipse is at 6.19. Total eclipse ends at 6.26. And partial umbral eclipse ends at 7.52. This is the A.M. you're talking about? Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you for spending time with me. I uh, hope to see you... See more of you next time, Kalguru. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye. Oh, Bye. -bye. Bye.